you stand with us? Welcome to Victor Valley Christian Church. If this is your first time, we just want to welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us. Let's put our hands together right here. We're just going to worship the Lord, amen? Here we go. I give you glory. I give you glory for all. Sing that one more time, come on. Your presence is an open door. We'll walk through, we want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. So come now.
just open up our hearts to you right now, Lord. We just say yes. Just say yes to him this morning. We invite your presence in this place, Lord. Would you just do that right now? Just invite him in.
faith in you, Lord. We put our trust in you. Some of you might need to do that this morning. Just let go. Just give him all your trust. Amen. Let's do that this morning. There's no better time than this. We love you. We trust you. in the hands of the maker of heaven. I lean not on my own understanding. My life is in the hands of the maker of heaven. So I give it all to you, God, trusting that you'll make something
So Eucharist, um, sacrament, Lord's Supper, and communion. Um, there's a division in names, right? And there's also a division in, in or, or a difference in maybe practice or, or acts or how we celebrate communion or how we do communion. Uh, but I recently read on a website called uh, Whole in One Communion. Um, there's fundamentally four, uh, four ways or four elements that we can all agree on. Uh, one of them is communion is all about Jesus. I think we can all agree on that. Number two, unleavened bread was broken representing Jesus' body. I think we could all agree on that. Or maybe some people might call it wafers, bread. I've heard Christ Krispies. I've heard Jesus. <laughs> so number three, wine represents Jesus' blood. Number four, communion is a symbol of the new covenant and Jesus' sacrifice. Luke twenty two fourteen 14 says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So, you know, whatever you call it, um, you know, however it's practiced, I think we could all agree it's, it's all about Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the Christ Krispies <laughs> to represent your, uh, your body, the wine to represent your blood. And you know, but above all, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for you, Lord. And uh, we just remember this time. We remember you, Lord. It's your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's play, pray for our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, um, you've blessed us so much with, uh, from, you know, just the little that we have to the much that we have, Lord, and, and this is our opportunity to, to give back to you, Lord. And um, I just pray for whatever we're able to give, that you would uh, multiply it, Lord, and that you use it for your, uh, your works. And so you know I pray. Amen. here and volunteered yesterday thank you so much those of you that did it I think it was a great time it was a time for us to just connect to serve together and have fun together I just really want to quickly though um, thank Robin Hernandez she was the force behind that 
She did a lot of work, and we appreciate her, and she did an awesome job. So thank you, Robin. Um, a few announcements real quick. We will be helping families during the holidays. You can keep an eye out for those announcements. They'll start pretty soon, but we will be helping to care for some families in need during the holiday season. Uh, the Helping Hands Ministry, which meets on Saturday mornings, they're in need of some volunteers to help with making sandwiches and delivering them to the homeless. If that's something you're interested in, check at Guest Relations. We have our Hope from McGurry table out today, our orphans in McGurry. We have six orphans left, so thank you those of you that have stepped up and helped us we have closed the gap on the orphans in need so thank you to those who stepped up if that's something you've been thinking about praying about head on out there Kimala will be out there and she would love to to introduce you some of the orphans um, visitors if you're visiting with us today we are so glad that you are here we hope that you have found a way to worship here and that you have felt warmed and welcomed. If you are visiting, even if it's not your very first day and I have not met you, I would love to meet you. After service, I'm gonna be over at Guest Central and I will have a gift and um, I would just love to meet you. So if you are visiting or newer to the church, head on back there and meet me. Youth, stay seated. You are staying in here today. Reason being is Robbie had a previous engagement for this Sunday, but we are so fortunate that we are going to be hearing from our elders and they are going to be sharing with us today. So would you guys join me as we welcome our elders to come and just share with us this morning. Okay, um, I do want to start off with an introduction. Greg McMahon, and it, I will say it's very odd not saying Greg and Bobby. Because <laughs> my kids who have gone through their youth program said Greg and Bobby is one word. <laughs> because when you talk to one, you're talking to both, you know. So, but this is just a half. Greg McMahon, Brandon Taylor. Greg and Brandon are serving elders this year. I am on sabbatical. We have two other elders. And let me ask you this, by a show of hands, how many of you could identify all four <coughs> of our serving elders right now? <laughs> I, stay, I see two hands. And that is exactly why we wanted to take this morning to introduce leadership to you, get to know us a little bit better, turn on your microphone, somehow. <laughs> I just need to talk louder through the whole thing. I can do that. Trust me. There you go. <laughs> Sorry. Right, now you got to start over I, again. Yeah, right. I do appreciate the applause. Most people would have applauded that the microphone was off. Um, I do want to start off um, on a, a more serious note. And I would like us as a body to gather in prayer. Um, Bobby McMahon has to deal with the passing of her mother in this past week. And as hard as that can be, most of us in the room understand what it's like to deal with that. So as a body, can we pray, please, for the McMahon family? Father God, we come to you on a morning where we can have celebration as we gather as your body, but the McMahon family comes in with a heavy heart. And they do know that Bobby's mom is now with you. But that doesn't take away the empty spot in their hearts that they can feel with her not being here in an earthly presence. So, Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to pour over the entire McMahon family. Let them physically feel your strength and your peace flow over them as they go through this grieving period. Father, we were thankful that Bobby's mom knew you and is now rejoicing with you. It's an it can be an exciting time. It can be a time of celebration, but we also acknowledge the physical um, grief 
that they can also feel. So be with them, give them comfort and peace, and walk with them as, as the, the days and weeks and months come ahead. Give them the strength to focus on you. Father, we ask these things in your son's name. Amen. The, the people that we as a body select as our leaders are not perfect. If you are hoping for the perfect person to be in leadership, you come to the wrong place. Because there's nobody in the room that would fulfill that. And your leaders do not. We come with hearts open to God's leading. And we pray for him to come in and show us, give us his vision and show us where he wants this body to go. And that's the direction that we step towards. But we do not come as perfect people. We came and are still broken. Just like those of you sitting in the seats this morning and people who should be here and people who are in the other Christ-centered bodies, we are broken. And that's the strength we can draw from each other. So please understand that the stories that we share with you this morning are coming because it's our lives that we're going to share. They are not perfect. They are not spot on. You will not find them, you know, God bless this person from the beginning of their life and now they're here in leadership at Victor Valley Christian Church. We have been blessed, but our life has not been perfect. So um, the first question I want to ask for all three of us is how did you come to salvation in Christ? Let's start with Greg. <laughs> okay. Well, I became a Christian when I was uh, just nine years old. Um, my family, my mom and dad, had actually met each other in church um, up in Great Falls, Montana, and uh, got married in that same church. And so we as a family were always going to church. I don't remember a time where we did not go to church. And uh, so when I was nine years old, my brother uh, Brian and I went to a junior boys camp in San Diego. And um, it was at that camp that there was a, a speaker. His name was Jerry Zwall. Uh, he played the musical saw, which was <laughs> interesting. And, um, but he also did these chalk drawings. And he did a chalk drawing one night of the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus. And then there was an altar call at the end of that. And my brother and I both, both went forward at that point, And I you know, prayed to receive Christ at that time. Well, for me, um, I always was uh, raised in the church. My uh, family went to uh, Costa Mesa, um, uh, Cabot Chapel, um, when there was all the hippie days. Uh, <laughs> so um, for me, I never known, did not know a house that was going to church. Um, I was eight years old when I gave my life to uh, Christ. Uh, my father used to have little Bible studies and everything at the house. We would, um, at home, we would sit around the couch, and yeah, that's where I asked Christ into my life. And then I was baptized when I was eight at the pastor's house. Um, and then ever since then, I've just always known to be in the church, be go, you know, going to church. Um, wow, you guys are kids. I was 29 when I made the decision that stuck in my heart that I, I needed Christ in my life. And uh, Susan and I, had attended an Amway function in Portland, Oregon. And on Sunday morning, there was a, a lay speaker, and he said, men, are you the spiritual leader of your household? And if you're not, you need to come down to the front of this, of the Portland Trailblazer Coliseum and get Christ into your heart. I was in the very back row, and all I felt was something grabbing me, and it wasn't Susan. You know, and I was, I don't remember the walk from here to there, but I was down there. And that, I still get the goosebumps from that impact. Uh, Greg, I'm going to start with you. I, we have questions that we wrote out, so this isn't all off the cuff. Darren, don't get worried. We do have a script somewhat. Um, Greg, how do you keep your focus on Jesus during tough times? Okay. Um 
Well, I guess the default, or actually even the most important thing for me is prayer. I just, you know, give it to, give it to the Lord and just ask for his wisdom and, and guidance um, when times are tough. But also strong, strong relationships with other believers is so valuable. It's, it's, you can't even describe how valuable uh, other believers in your life, how, how much they can help. I can't emphasize that enough, the importance of strong ties with your, with your church family. Um, and I always go back to think of the, think of the bond between, between David and Jonathan. First Samuel chapter 18, 1 through 3 says, After David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. From that day... Saul kept David with him and did not let him return to his father's house. And Jonathan made a covenant, a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Yeah, just that the prayer and just strong, strong ties with other believers. Cool. Um, Brandon, when did you have your I need God in my life moment. Okay. So like I, I mentioned, I was raised in the church, saved when I was eight. Um, as I grew up, um, church was more like school, you can per se. I, I studied. I, I was the first one to pray, the first one to read. Um, I kind of learned it more than kind of feeling it. So when I was about 14, 15, my uh, parents were having some issues, you know, marriage-wise. Marriage and being the, the third kid, I took the blunt of a lot of it. Because I had an older brother who was out of the house, an older sister that was working, had friends, and a younger sister who was too young to kind of understand. So my parents always came and came to me, you know, so it was very hard for me. And then I went to a kind of a dark place um, where I started hanging out with certain friends that were, weren't doing the best things. Uh, they were drinking and smoking weed. Um, and so I kind of got into that uh, phase for a little bit. And then uh, we used to skate. I used to rollerblade, you know, if anyone was aggressive rollerbladers, you know. To any are out there, I doubt there's any. Uh, but uh, I was 15, and I would skate at this Temple Baptist Church down in Paris. Um, and we would go smoke in the cemetery afterwards, you know. And so <laughs> with that, uh, uh, the new youth leader came in. And he goes, hey, I know you guys are skating here. You guys are more than welcome to skate here. Uh, but when we go to have service, you guys need to either leave or come in. Well, I, I kind of left a little bit. But then, you know, I always had that feeling in my heart, like, you know, there, there's something better than this. I know I'm supposed to be better and doing the right thing. So I attended one of the, the Wednesday nights, and there he talked about g God and Christ. Is, it's not about knowledge. It's not about how much you can cram into your head, because we can put all this information to our head, but do we apply it? Do we use action upon it? Um, and so that's where I realized that our, our Christianity is more of a relationship. It's more of something that you need to, f that you, you have to feel and act upon. And that's where I was like, that's my aha moment I had. It was like, I didn't have a, a relationship with Christ. I only knew of him, but, it, but did he know about me, you know? You know, was I giving him myself? And so that's where it finally snapped. And I made that conclusion to talk to my friends and say, hey, you know, why don't you attend? And no, well, they decided not to. And reaching out to them over and over again, you know, hey, I, I, I mentioned it. I had to cut ties because it's the association of people you hang around with they're going to make you or break you. And so I decided to hang around with a great association of people that are going to grow me. Cool. I can, uh, I can definitely attest to the association factor. Um, when I graduated high school, I entered the military. And uh, the stories that you hear about the military, I will tell you most of them are true. And most of them are not good when you look at it from the perspective of, of a Christ-centered life. And I was one of those. Um, I was one of those where you would not want me to date your daughter. Um, I served at five different bases in the nine years I was active duty. And uh, I've served overseas for two and a half years. And the things that you've seen in movies that go on over in the Orient, I was one of those that could have been on the film. And that's not something that I like to uh, dwell upon. It's, it's not something that I'm proud of, but it is who I am. And it came with who I associated with. I did not associate with the people that Brandon was wise enough and Greg was wise enough 
to, to get in a group with. I was the other ones that went the other way. Not only would I have been smoking in the cemetery, I had kept right on going away from church. But every place I went, God had somebody there in my association. It, and I think about it, I didn't listen to them. I, 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 I didn't shun them, but I, I just didn't hear them. But every single base that I was assigned to in my nine years, there was somebody there who had Christ in their heart and had a relationship with their Savior. And I can see their faces as I'm talking to you this morning. God was there. I chose not to make a relationship with him. But I knew it, that that person was there. And then I got out of the military. I met Susan here in the Victor Valley and associated with her family. And there was a family that had a relationship with their savior. And I, the, the candle started to flicker because my upbringing was a religion. My, we prayed, uh, we said grace every day before every meal. My parents taught me the Lord's Prayer. And uh, on some Sundays, we would go to church. And when the offering bag, they gave their obligatory dollar, you know, just to make sure they wouldn't get fingers pointed at them by the older blue-haired people. But it was, there was no real commitment. There was no relationship. And I started seeing that when I got around Susan's family. Then I got around you guys. I started attending Victor Valley Christian Church in 1989, just before we were married. And I've been in association with this body ever since. But each one of us have realized the importance of the association in our lives. And I've, I've heard many years ago, who you're going to be in five years depends on what you read and who you associate with. Yeah, especially when we tell the youth, um, you say, look, you're, you hang around with five losers, you're going to be the six. You know, <laughs> if you're going to hang around with five winners, you're going to be the six. So it all depends on who you hang out with because they're going to either draw you down or lift you up. Brandon, why is being accountable to a fellow believer so important for you? So for me, and that brings it to that whole loser winner thing. Um, Again, another testimony, and again, this is my journey, what I've gone through, and again, like you know, um, Tom was saying, none of us are perfect, and I know everyone struggles with different things, but for one of mine was about seven, eight years ago, um, I've been attending this church since 2009, um, to, no, 2010, Nick was one years old, um, so um, Veronica and I were having some issues, but no, normally the issue was more with me, it was something I, I never had worked on when I was younger. Um, I, st I stumbled upon, um, when I was 10, my brother's stash of porn. And with that, it led down to a darker path eventually. And with technology, how it is today, um, it kind of brought that back. So when uh, she stumbled upon it, we had our issues and, th and things like that, but I, we came, I came to the church. Uh, the church was doing a thing called men's fraternity. At first, I'm like, I'll just show her. I'll just go to the church and I'll show her that I'm changing wrong thing to, to say and do um, because I was just trying to do an appearance instead of an internal change. Um, but I got around a group of guys and those guys, I, I expressed my feelings, my heart, my everything to them. And they also turned and were like, you know what? We have the same issues. We have the same thoughts, same, same stuff that we've never dealt with. So we formed a men's group. We read a book called Clean. Um, and that was all about accountability. When you're accountable to somebody, it's much harder to walk up to somebody and say, you know, if, I, if Tom was to ask me a question, how are you doing today, Brandon? Because he knows my life. He knows what I'm struggling with. But if I'm not real with him and I'm fake with him, then he'll never know or can never help me. But if I'm real with him and let him know um, what's going on in my life, he can come and help me. He can keep me accountable. And accountability is one of the biggest things that we need to rely on in our Christian lives. Because, again, that's who we can, we can drag ourselves down into. It's so easy to say, God, forgive me, and go, okay, cool. God, forgive me over and over again. You know, I don't know that's you guys, but I know that was me. Forgive me, forgive me. But it's so much harder to walk up to another brother or, or sister in Christ and sit there and, and say, yeah, I messed up. Yeah, I did this. And for them to say, then what are you going to do about it? So 
So accountability is very strong, um, and that grew us, and that strengthened us. So that way we can quit those addictions, move on, strengthen our marriages, um, strengthen our hearts to actually help other people. Again, my journey, I've gone through it. Many of you might have gone through it. But that journey makes us who we are to help other people. And that's why I believe it's really accountable to other followers who might be going through those issues. Because you never know who might come up to you and say, I have this problem. And you go, I had that problem. Let me help you through it. It's kind of like the, the old story of a, a, a guy who finds himself at the bottom of a hole and yells up from the bottom of the hole, hey, is there anybody there that can help me? And a pastor walks by and says, oh, sure, I can help you, and writes down a Bible verse and drops it down in the hole. And the guy's still <laughs> down in the hole. And then a doctor walks by and goes, doc, can you help me? And he goes, yeah, I can. And he writes out a prescription and drops it down in the hole. It's still down at the bottom of the hole. And his, his buddy Joe comes by and says, Joe, can you help me? And Joe jumps down in the, in the hole with him. And he goes, now we're both stuck in the hole. But Joe goes, yeah, but I've been down here before, and I know how to get out. That's where association can get That's us there. I stole that. I appreciate that, but I stole that. I did. I did. It's not something I came up with. But I thought a lot of wisdom behind it. Um, Greg, is faith uh, an everyday choice? Yes, I believe it is. I believe that the faith is a choice we make every day because we wake up and there's new circumstances we, we come across. There's new, new things we're going to be a part of, whether it's at work or, or at home. And we make the choice every day whether we are going to be an example of that Christ-like attitude. Um, we make choices every time we speak, you know, how you're going to answer a question, um, how we're going to act. I mean, we may say something, but the tone of your voice, the, the expressions on your face um, tell, the, tell the real story, you know, how... how how you really are feeling about a situation or, or how you're going to react with something. And, and that can make or break um, somebody else's day too. And, and you, so you always want to have that Christ-like attitude. And that's a choice that I, that I want to make on a daily basis. Um, no matter what situation we're, we're a part of, whether it's, like I said, whether it's at work or it's with your family, you know, family gatherings, you know, hey, we've got, Thanksgiving coming up. For some people, that's very stressful um, because, you know, there's always, there's always those ones that, oh, my gosh, i got to sit around Aunt Susie again, you know. <laughs> I don't have an Aunt Susie, so I don't know. <laughs> but you know, those, those can be stressful, but if we have that Christ-like attitude, we go into it and, and just have that choice of I am going to show faith, show the faith that I have with the Lord no matter what happens and 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 i'm going to exude that psalms uh, 119 verse 11 tells us if we hide god's word in our hearts that it's going to help us stay away from sin it'll help us have the right answer you know we hide god's word we're going to we're going to have um, that attitude at, uh, that is going to be honoring to him psalms 119 105 also says your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. But, but you know what? Don't just stop at verse 105. Look at 106 as well. Because if you continue with that, it says, I have taken an oath and confirmed it that I will follow your righteous laws. So if we just stop with, you know, the, the lamp under my feet and a light to my path, you know, we sing a song that has that, but but I think it's even more important to go on to, to verse 106 where we've taken that oath that we want to we wanna have that Christ-like attitude every day in our lives. My faith is a commitment that I've made. And through the Holy Spirit, I'm being renewed day by day, um, which 2 Corinthians 4.16 talks about, that renewal day by day. So every day we can be renewed, you know, through prayer and through the importance of daily Bible study and reading. Um, 
making that a priority in your life. And so we, that just comes out naturally because we are walking with, with him. And um, like Tom and Brandon have said, you know, the associations of who, you, who you're with um, affects that so, so importantly. And, and just to find that group of friends that, that are like-minded um, to, to help our faith um, be, be the way it should be and to be strong and, and to, to be an example. Because sometimes, you know what? We are the only Jesus that somebody's going to ever see. And so let's, let's be that Jesus to them. That's a, a good lead into how do you keep your focus on Jesus during tough times? Um, I know for Susan and I, um, we tend to be ones up and ones down. Fortunately, we've not both been down uh, at the same time. We've both been up at the same time, but usually we're not down in the dumps at the same time. So when, you're, when I'm going through something, Susan's there to go, okay, that's fine. Are you done whining? Come on, <laughs> let's go. This is not what Sounds God like has in line for us. He doesn't want us to be down there. He's not going to focus on that. You know, stop with that. And when, there's, when, when it's her turn to be down, I do not use the same statement. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, dear. How may I assist you in, in coming up out of, out of this valley? You know? And yes, we joke, and every husband's going, wise man. And every wife is going, you bet you. <laughs> <laughs> but the reason that we do it that way is she would not respond to that. If I came at her that way, she would not have responded positively. So that would not have been a benefit for either one of us. So I respond to her as what would be beneficial to her. She wisely understands that every now and then she needs to lightly hit me with a two by four to get my attention, to get the focus back on God is here for us. He loved us now. He loved us then. He died for us when we were still sinners. So why do you think he's forgotten us now? And I will tell you, for, for me, two times recently, recently is five, eight years, as the older I get, recent is a lot longer. Um, there, were, there were two situations that we faced as a family that brought my, my focus into the fact that no matter what, this was bad. But if I focus on God, I can stay strong and everything's going to be fine. Uh, in 2015, our youngest daughter had major surgery. And I, some of you have faced this. I had to take my daughter and hand her to a group of people that I did not know. And her life was in their hands. Nothing I could do to impact, to change what was going to occur. And I had to come to the point where I said, God, here's my daughter. I lay her in your hands. No matter what the outcome of this procedure is, she's yours. She's going to come home. She's going to come home to her family. Here on earth, she's going to come home to you and I'm going to be good with either one. That relieved so much anxiety over her procedure. And you know that she's home because she's here on campus somewhere. I'm not sure, you know. But it relieved so much. I could go into the hospital and deal with that and not be dreading it because I trusted God and I, I was going to focus on his love for me, his love for her, and that's what I was going to stand on. And that walked me through that entire process, and I was good with it. More recently, we got to experience a car accident that could have been horrible. It totaled Susan's truck. It was her truck. 
I happened to be driving, but it totaled her truck with a semi. Most folks don't play bumper tag with a semi and walk out smiling. I walked out of that without a scratch, without a bruise, not a stiff muscle. And through the whole thing, Susan and I, our family, and the other people involved were thanking God. Nobody was hurt. It was just a truck. Things can be replaced. We were fine. Everything is going to be okay. We trusted God throughout the whole thing, and everything's okay. So as, as Greg has, is going through now with your family, as he talked about, Focusing on God during the tough times. And the association that we have, we can pull each other back. When we're going through a rough spot, we can pull each other up. Somebody in this room has been in the same hole that Greg and Bobby are in this morning. Someone in this room was in the same hole with Susan and I and our kids when Maggie went through her surgery. Every one of us goes through something, and there's somebody in this room who you can relate to. Don't ever think you're in a bad situation by yourself. Brandon, what area of ministry are you passionate about? Well, the ministry I'm most passionate about um, even when I was um, in high school and out of high school, I always felt uh, for ministering to the kids, being with the, the kids, whatever age group um, that might be, um, but I always have found a passion in that uh, because uh, they're our future. They're what's going to be sitting in these pews, these, these pews. Um, <laughs> old church. Uh, old church, sorry. I, I was at Temple Baptist, so that's why pews. <laughs> you know, uh, but... They, they, again, they're our future. They're, they're what is going to move this, move the, the, our, our church forward. You know, and if we don't start with them, we don't start when they're young. Even as parents, I'm a parent of three, and I know I can always do a better job with my kids on teaching them, raising them, and telling them, like, here, this is Christ. This is the walk you're going to walk. This is what you're going to have to go through. Um, it, life's going to suck. Sorry. Uh, but God and Christ are there to help you through those sucky times to overcome it. So that's why I'm most passionate about it, because I look at today's culture. Everything's phone, everything's internet, everything's TV, everything is, you know, social media this, social media that. They have lost so much contact. And sometimes as parents, we lose contact from our kids. As adults, we lose contact from these, these, um, these young adults. Um, I love going into Base Camp Junior with Veronica. At first, the, the, all the little kids were scared of me, you know. <laughs> I don't know why. Every, every little kid sometimes scared of me. Sometimes they wave at me, and they're happy, and they smile, and I'm like, ah, you're not broken. But, uh... But when I went in there and I started creating this, this relationship with them, again, it's always relationship. It's them trusting you and you being able to breathe into them. You know, I'm high-fiving them. You know, they're two-year-old, three-year-olds, giving them knuckles and doing like a little handshake. Um, I do with a couple of them. And then when they see you, they know who you are. Um, and then with the youth now, just kind of with the, old, um, the high school group, just trying to breathe into them, trying to give them my life ex experiences, um, what Veronica and I have gone through. Because if we've gone through the trials and they have not gone through it yet or have gone through it, at least they have something that they could base it off. Go, go you know, I'm struggling with that at school right now. How did you deal with it? Best people to talk to are people who've experienced these situations. It's hard to go to someone who's never experienced to give you their opinion. I'd rather have experience over opinion um, in anything. But again, with, with, with the children, with, with the young adults, um, junior high, uh, they need us. And um, I always felt that calling, that they need us in our life. And we don't want to just be their friend or be their parent. Uh, we want to be an influence in their life. You see, we always want to give, we want to leave a legacy for our children. But the biggest thing is that the legacy we put into our children that matters the most. So remember that. If anyone here has children, we want them to, to succeed in life, grow, become something better than we have ever become. We never want to hold our children back in those things. Uh, we want to be able to give them the best we can without, you know, um, just, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, spoiling them. Uh, <laughs> um, but giving them things that will help them in life to grow and become better than us. I always, I was like, be, be a better man than me, Nick. Be a better man than me. That's all I can ever ask because there's a woman out there who needs a better man. 
um, my daughters, you know, there's, there's a man out there who need to be better for you. And that's all we can expect for, these, uh, for our kids. So I'm very passionate about that. Um, and I, I just want our church to grow. I want the youth to grow. I want them to become leaders. I don't want to just, we don't want to just say, have faith in something, have faith in this, because they're like, they have questions. If you ever ask your kid, ask them questions and see what, what they get back to you. Um, but I know I felt this experience this when I was younger. If you ask a question, they say, you just got to have faith. I'm like, oh, faith in what? Where do I have faith? How do I establish that? Well, you know, they have so many questions. They need them answered. We get an hour, half an hour with them a week. You know, as parents, as um, teachers, adults, we have either our a whole day or life with them. And I feel that just being there for them, giving them my experiences and breathing Christ into them is the most important thing that I see. Greg, what are you passionate about in ministry? Um, oh, yeah. Mine's not attached to my <laughs> head, is it? No. Um, <laughs> I, I, I agree wholeheartedly with, with Brandon. Um, for me, it's kids. For me, it's been, um, I went to school, uh, uh, got my master's degree in actually youth ministry, um, and never actually was hired by a church, but that's okay because I became a school teacher, and for 35 years now, I've been a school teacher and been able to work with kids anywhere from five years old up to, well, in youth ministry up to, you know, 18-year-old kids, and I love them all. And to be able to instill in them the love of, of Christ uh, um, through the word, through music. You know, I play guitar and just have a blast sharing uh, uh, music and singing with, with kids. I teach kindergarten and just am able to share joy in their lives. But, you know, in working with youth, it's just, I have to share this story yesterday. It just happened. And this is not even in my notes, so whatever. <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> I got a phone call from one of our former youth here at Victor Valley Christian Church. Um, Bobby and I started attending church here in 1997, and um, we've been working in youth for a lot of those years. And one of our youth, who's now a um, high school, excuse me, a college graduate, she um, is, you know, in the, in the workforce now, and we're just talking and just catching up a bit, and... She asked me to officiate her wedding. And just like, oh my goodness. And what an honor. What an honor to be able to, to, to do something like that. And um, because she said that, you know, Bobby, my wife, and I were just a huge, a huge uh, part of her life growing up, you know, because she was in our youth group from in junior high and high school. And uh, so. To see that is just, my gosh, you know, the, the, yeah, it's a passion. It's kids, it, you know, and one more quick story. I see the clock moving. Um, my first year school teaching, I had a boy who was, he was a pretty tough boy. I taught fourth grade back then. And my goodness, he was, he was, he was a tough kid, but, you know, him and I made a connection. Bobby and I took him rock climbing with the principal, and he accepted Jesus in a rappel down a 300-foot face in Joshua Tree. <laughs> Mr. McMahon, Mr. McMahon, I'm going to die. No, Roger, you're not going <laughs> to die. Trust the ropes. We're okay. Because I rappelled right down next to him. <laughs> and, and so he became a Christian at that point. I don't know if it was a, well, whatever we'll, we'll call that. <laughs> but... Many, many, many years later, like I said, he was, a, he was a, f a fourth grader, so he was, what, nine years old. I got a phone call from Indiana. Hey, Mr. McMahon, who's this? You guess who this is? And I knew who, exactly who it was right away. Roger Schimmel, what are you? What are you doing? What are you, what are you up to these days? I'm in Navy SEALs training. It's like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> you would have never known that when he was nine years old that he would be that big of a success. And um, just it's those little things, the stories that come back and, and you just realize, we don't know what kind of influence we have in somebody's life. We really don't. You don't know how much they're watching you. That's like I was sharing, you know, we at times, we might be the only Jesus that somebody ever sees. So we need to be that Christ-like example. And, and, and 
be that love to them, no matter what they are going through, um, to be that example um, to them of, of Christ here on earth. And you may have already gotten this, but Greg and Bobby, one more, and Brandon and his wife, Veronica, uh, work in youth uh, and work on our youth program now. And they go in there without a whip in a chair every Sunday and love on these kids of ours and serve them and teach them. And I don't know how you do it, but thank you, Jesus, you guys do. Caffeine. Big time. Caffeine. 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 Okay. <laughs> For me, the, uh, the focus on uh, a, a ministry-type topic would be on marriages. Uh, I am very fortunate to be married to a perfect woman, so I don't know what the rest of you are going to do, but, um, and my kids hear me say that all the time, that Susan is perfect. Now, in, in, she doesn't have to hear this. But in biblical standards, none of us are perfect. I understand that. But Susan is perfect for me. And she is perfect as the mother of our children. And I believe that that needs to be the focus in every household. If we can show our children strong marriages, strong relationships with mom and dad, they have a better chance in society. And that's secular st uh, statistics. A home with a solid relationship between mom and dad, the kids have the best chance of having a successful life when they move out on their own. And a Christ-centered relationship is the strongest thing we can have. And that is my focus. Now, as, as you've gone through um, your ministry and your serving in a body, what has been your biggest obstacle? My biggest obstacle in serving? Or just in general? Oh, in general. That you've had to face. Oh, okay. So bringing it down back to relationships. Um, so one of the biggest thing here is uh, when I was in youth ministry, I was a junior high youth leader, um, Veronica and I were dating at the time. And um, again, I wasn't, I didn't have someone to confide in. All it brings is that accountability. And I've learned accountability when I was talking to you about, about seven years ago. Um, so Veronica and I, you know, we, we were going to have a kid before we were married. Um, and it was a very big thing, um, upon me, my family, uh, how I felt. I was tw 20, 21 years old. I mean, I look back and I'm like, that, that was kind of old looking, but now I'm like, I had a kid being 38 now. Uh, but it was very still hard. still a kid. Yeah. Everyone says I'm still a kid. I got grays, so it's coming. <laughs> That's some kids. <laughs> But through that time was very difficult because, I mean, I was going to have a kid with a, a woman who I, you know, I love, uh, but our relationship wasn't strong. Um, you know, we decided, to, yeah, we keep Haley. Uh, she's been the biggest blessing to us. It, you know, it, she's been just a heartfelt. God was using that situation to grow us again. And my journey is to help maybe other people who are journeying through the same situations. But... Luckily, the, the pastor, the youth pastor there said, you know what, Brandon? Look, it doesn't mean that you're ever, never not going to be used for ministry again. Just right now, you're not ready. But it doesn't mean that you can't turn around and start using this for, for ministry later on in life. Um, God will always have a plan for you. God doesn't matter if you're from Yale or jail. He's going to use you. <laughs> um, you know, so don't ever think that you're never not going to be used with, with what you've gone through. I've gone through that. I've gone through a lot of crap in my life, um, I still have issues. Like I said, we're not perfect, but it's what we do with ourselves. We, we, we can't strive for perfect, being perfect, to do everything, but at least we can strive to do something. And that's why I look about the serving and, um, and my relationship and those obstacles to overcome them. Because I look at it as now, that yeah, sucks at the time, uh, it's difficult. What do I do with it? Do I turn, run, or do I deal with it? Do I find counsel? Do I find, seek someone out who's maybe gone through it? And that's actually what helped. And that pastor, youth pastor, he helped us. Um, again, rocky, still rocky situations, but people here at the church, men that I, I love and admire, um, I have a good association outside of the church that I go through. My parent, my father, um, he's a prayer warrior. He is 
he is the reason why I'm here today, and I give all thanks and glory to him because he has taught me that it, it is a relationship. He has taught me that through stuff that you go through, you can overcome it. I mean, um, he just found out he has um, uh, cancer, um, but he's still strong. He doesn't care. He's like, God will use me where I'm going to be at. And I look at that, and that's a great example. I go, holy crud. I go, he's just still going, still, still serving the church. Um, and that's a big obstacle to overcome. So I have great examples in my life, and that's well, one of my obstacles I went through. So growing up, having a Haley and then having another and another, I've learned to be very responsible at a very young age. Um, and it's taught me to take care of my family and be there. Um, and again, to see the, the, the kids that are out there today who might have parents in the same situation that, don't, that didn't have the right, the same upbringing. So. Thank you. Um, we're going to transition now to the, the band coming back up as we close our service this morning. Um, I did want to add that the chairman of the elders this year, John Williams, uh, was not able to be up on stage with us this morning. Uh, he had already scheduled a time that he and his son would be attending a football game together, getting some bonding time. And uh, Sergio Tejeda is also one of our serving elders this year. But Sergio's wife, Taryn, who leads our uh, base camp ministry, has just accepted a position in Southern Oregon. And they are preparing to move up there uh, at the end of this year or the start of next. So we were going to let Sergio take a bye on this one. Uh, and... Uh, but the leadership that both of those men add uh, to your leadership team uh, is invaluable. And we are going to miss the Tejedas. And uh, we're looking at those of you sitting in the chairs that are going to have to fill the vacancies that they leave. So don't be surprised if somebody taps you on the shoulder and says, hey, we've got some things that, that need to be looked at, things that need to be taken care of would you consider serving in this ministry? And uh, I hope by hearing us, one, we haven't chased you out of the church. Uh, we've, we've chased the Tejedas out of state. Yeah, there's another one on my belt. Um, we chased the toners out of state earlier this year. Um, but you don't have to be perfect to serve the body. We're all here to serve God with the gifts that he gives us. So take advantage of those. Don't, don't let them go to waste. Yeah. Christ doesn't call the qualified. He makes you qualified. So serve. Greg, would you give us a quick prayer as we turn sure. the stage back to I the... didn't break the mic. No. <laughs> Father, we just thank you again for the opportunity to come together to share um, stories as you've worked in our lives, Lord. Um, the three of us here and, and of course everybody here um, in our congregation that, that know you, that have, have life stories, life experiences in going through life with you and, and, and the way you've brought um, all of us through those things, through those situations. We just thank you, Lord, um, that you use us. We pray again that you would continue to, to bless um, this body, to uh, bring Whoever uh, you have prepared ahead of time as a new senior pastor, thank you for, um, for that person that you pre have prepared ahead of time. We just pray right now for a blessing over this whole body today. Help us to continue to focus on you, to, to feel your presence in our hearts and our lives. And may your holy name be glorified as we walk each day um, as an example of you to others. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, why don't you stand with us? We'll sing one more time before we go. Let's put our hands together here.
that we get to be around each other, Lord, to be lifted up by one another. Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would help us to be that community of people for other people, the people that are not in this room, Father God, that we'd be able to show them that love that we feel in here this morning. We love you, Lord. We thank you so much for your goodness and for bringing us here. We pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. All right, you guys have a great week.